Okay. Amazon finally released The Boys. The Boys, which we were convinced were was just going to be absolutely fucking terrible. And it wasn't. Not at all. I. It was not terrible. 100%. I really liked it. No, I, I also really liked it. Um, okay, so The Boys is Amazon's new original series. Yeah. Yeah, based off, obviously, Garth Ennis' The Boys, which is one of the funniest, most fucked up comics you'll ever read. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Is it as fucked up as the Brat Pack? No. Because no. the Brat Pack's not funny. <laughs> the Brat Pack isn't meant to... You're meant to walk away from the Brat Pack depressed. Yeah, you're supposed to take a shower after that. The Boys actually has jokes and is trying to be funny. Yeah. So, the whole idea of The Boys is there is a CIA team in charge of controlling superheroes because all superheroes are under the banner of the Vought Corporation. The Vought Corporation lets them be completely spoiled sociopathic assholes that do whatever the fuck they want and don't really ever punish them. Well, in the comic, as stated, they're a CIA team led by a guy named Billy Butcher, uh, Mother's Milk, the female, Frenchie, and the new guy on the team, Huey. We Huey. And the new show on Amazon tries to pay tribute to that and tries to adapt it in a, in a way that is going to bring, bring in an audience and not totally run them away when all the really fucked up shit happens. Yeah. Because I, out of the gate, I will say this. If you've read The Boys, this is going to seem like just a neutered version of it. Kind of like how they did to Preacher. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because holy fuck. Like, it's a good show. I, I need to get that out of the way. It's a good show. But if you read the comics, all you can say is, man, I remember when that fucked me up for days. <laughs> yeah, so... The, the basic concept is it follows a guy named Huey, who in the comic is Scottish, but in, in this show, he's American. So, I, I'm just going to judge it based on the show for now. Yeah, taking some liberties. Yeah, taking, taking some liberties. So, Huey, he's average guy, kind of a wuss, isn't really taken seriously that much. And all he really wants to do is, you know, be with his girlfriend Robin and all that. Well, Robin is unfortunately killed by a superhero when he was doing something stupid and wasn't paying attention. And... Huey's kind of forced to realize the dark truth about superheroes, that they're a bunch of spoiled fucking assholes. He's confronted by Billy, who basically tells him, hey boy, you want revenge? And drags him into some bad shit. Yeah. And this is a really, really fun show. It, it, you, If you really liked the first kick-ass movie, I think that's a really good way to sell it to people. If you liked that first kick-ass movie, you're gonna like this a lot because it has that same almost punk rock kind of vibe. It plays like Iggy Pop, Joan yeah. Jett. It's like, yeah, it, it's really clear on trying to make this an energetic, fun thing. Yeah, it's trying to sell its own style. And that's something I will praise it for. It, uh, The reason we didn't really like like the idea of it whenever we were seeing the trailers and everything was because it felt, it felt like it was going to be a butchered version of it. It felt like it was trying to turn the boys into something like Deadpool. Yeah. And that's just not really it. Yeah. But a after seeing the show... It feels kind of like a, an adaptation of something uh, like Ghost in the Shell, where you know you have the original source material, you have something else, and it's it's something else that is its own thing. Yeah, so that has the same characters. Yeah, you. So it's not like the 1995 Ghost in the Shell compared to the manga, or the 1995 compared to Standalone Complex. This is its own beast. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where everything has its own way of doing things, and the show does actually stay pretty loyal to what it does adapt. Yeah. I mean. You have the Seven, which is kind of like the Justice League of the world. Yeah. You have the boys, although they do tinker with the origin of that. Yeah. Where, in the comic, the boys from the get-go are CIA. Yeah. They they were a team set up, you know, to combat superheroes because Vought was trying to buy influence into the government. And they are basically saying, fuck you. Yeah. Well, in the show, they were CIA. Then the shit with Mallory and Lamplighter and all that. And if you read the comics, you know what I'm talking about. That whole fiasco. That happens and they're shut down and Billy is trying to piece them together without official approval from the CIA. Yeah. And it is fun for what it does bring to the table that's new. Yeah. Like there's the conflict with Translucent, which I don't remember <laughs> if that was actually in the comic, but... I don't think it was. I don't think it was either, but, but what they gave us was pretty fucking good. Yeah. And, and the, whole, the whole thing with the show is... It's really trying to bring this into a way that is modern, but does not feel modern day. I yeah. had to put that in massive quotes for, you know what I'm talking about, where 
ultra diverse, ultra this, ultra that. It does have minority characters, you know, like black people, there's lesbians, uh, it does even bring up me too. But a big thing with The Boys is it is a brutal satire of corporate and American culture. Yeah. So whenever you see something where you're about to roll your eyes and go, well, of course they're going to do this, remember that everything in The Boys is a fucking joke. Yeah. Because there's the shit with Starlight. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck Starlight. <laughs> so, so essentially, in order to be inducted into the Seven... Uh, officially, Starlight has to just straight up, like, accept some sexual abuse. Yeah, which, honestly, the comics were a bit more fucked up. Oh, 100% more fucked up. Yeah, because in 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 the show, she's me too by one of the lower guys. In the comics, yeah. she straight up had to suck Superman's dick. Yeah. Or she was gonna die. <laughs> she didn't stop Superman. Yeah, no. And that's the thing with the boys, where... You know, you have Watchmen, which is trying to be the ultra-classy deconstructionist superheroes. You're like, oh, Roshark was the true hero because he had, he had principles to stand on. Dr. Manhattan believed in genocide through approval. The boys is more like, I, I want to suck this guy's dick, but then he fucks a dolphin, and I don't like that. Yeah. You know, it's a lot more just, like, turn your brain off, have fun thing. Yeah. Which comes from the fact that Garth Ennis fucking hates superheroes. <laughs> he really fucking hates superheroes. Let's let this guy that hates our whole career be be part of the club. Oh shit. Yeah, because every time he was he was put on a, a major character, he fucked with them. Like and you, and you think the legacy shit they do now is bad with Marvel, where it's like, oh Thor's a chick. Garth Ennis wrote it to where Green Lantern got raped in a bathroom by a huge black guy. <laughs> that fucking happened. <laughs> And not even mentioning what he did with Punisher and Marvel Knights, where Garth Ennis really loves the Punisher, he just hates everyone else. <laughs> so, you have to expect that going in, where whenever there's a superhero, 99% of the time they're a bad person. Yeah. Like, very rarely, even in the comics, was there an exception. And that, that is something I picked up on, where they're trying to make Billy, like, ultra prejudiced against superheroes. Yeah, like, mega, mega prejudiced against all superheroes. He directly drops the line of all soups are the exact same. All, all soups are the, are the same uh, and all soups are bad. And it's one of those where it feels like they're trying to frame that as oh man, that's so unreasonable. But like, as someone who read the comic, I'm like yeah, he's right. Not even as, so, as just someone who's read the comic. Like As someone who who's just watching the show, you've seen that so far, there's literally only one superhero in existence that that's is a not, good person. Yeah, that's not a huge fucking cunt. That is one good person. Yeah, because um, A Train, he's supposed to be the Flash. Egotistical jackass. Yep. Uh, Queen Maeve, she's supposed to be Wonder Woman. A coward drunk. A coward alcoholic. Yeah, who in the comic is actually like a bitter asshole that mentally abuses Starlight super hard. Yeah, I that's something I didn't think they did very well in this. Because they try to make her a little too nice. Not only a little too nice, like the, this uh, this is going to end up being more than one season, assuming it gets approved. It has to. Because it has a mega huge cliffhanger, and I, I hope it's already been approved for another season, because it's, yeah. it's that good and I, I do want to see it finish. Yeah. Um, but she seems super redeemable. Yeah, she, she seems like she actually has the chance at a redemption arc. Yeah, whereas in the comics, no one... It was a tiny little redemption arc. No one deserved a redemption arc in no, the comics. Not a single one. And uh, Homelander, he's supposed to be Superman. He's the worst out of all of them. He's fucking scum, yeah. He is a psychopath. And one thing that I did notice with the show is they emphasized only really on the Seven. Well, in the actual comic... There's all sorts of superhero teams. Yeah, there's there's the fucking Avengers. Avengers botched X Men. <laughs> yeah, X Men. They have a whole bunch of fucking people they played around with because yeah. you know Garth Ennis was making fun of everyone. Yeah. So yeah, that was a the thing. They even had you know Stan Lee jokes where Stan Lee <laughs> yeah. was like their bitter ass informant that said motherfucker all the time. Yeah. It was great. And with the show, I stated they're focusing a lot more on the Seven, which I think is just kind of weird because that was like the most powerful team. Yeah. So you're, sta you're starting with the most powerful ones. You're starting with the Justice League rather than with the Avengers, you know? Yeah. Avengers strong, Avengers don't have Superman. Exactly, yeah. But it's still, I, I can see what they were doing and I do like it. And in the comic, there was a lot more of an emphasis on like the process, the blackmail, where the boys are so used to this, where there's rarely a fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, e even Huey, who is the new guy, is like he screws up, but it doesn't take 
you know, that long before he's, he kind of learns the ropes, kind of understands what he's supposed to do. And the Huey in this is actually more clever, yeah. where he's a lot more of a techie guy, while the Huey in the comic is literally just a Scottish conspiracy theorist stoner. Yeah. Which I thought was fucking hilarious. And there is some pretty clever jokes in this. I actually think that on its own, with its own humor, it's pretty good. Yes, yeah, it stands alone for sure. Yeah, so I think this is a good adaptation where if you just completely separate yourself from the comic, this is funny. And this is good. Yeah. Uh, Carl Urban, I fucking love his Billy. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, where Billy, I think they actually got right. It's just the writing around Billy, I think, got a little, like, uh, that's not really him. Yeah, they, they changed a lot of stuff, and I think that yeah. might come from the fact that they changed the way the boys operate from the comics. Yeah. Where, like, yeah. it, in this, they're just 100%, like, they're guys with training, but they're still normal people. They have yeah. literally no edge on superheroes whatsoever. Yeah, which is different from the comic, because in, in the comic... They were supplied with the chemical that makes superheroes because the whole idea was you have to be on their on the same level. Yeah. So you won't immediately fucking die. Yeah. And in this, you know, they shoot for more of like they're just finding out about the chemical, just finding out about the origin of superheroes, which is a, a tad odd. Yeah. But yeah, it's forgivable. But what makes me weird is okay, Billy as a character, Billy Butcher, he's he's a leader. Obviously, he's supposed to in the comic. He visually looks like the Punisher, which I think is yeah. I think is an intentional thing from Garth Dennis. But anyway, Billy is the kind of guy where he walks into a room, it doesn't matter what room it is, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing, they do whatever the fuck he says. Yeah. That's Billy. He is ultra manipulative, he knows what he wants, and he's gonna get it. In the show, they actually try to make people argue back, like the CIA mm -hmm. director, uh, Susan. Yeah. She's super like, Billy, get the fuck out, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. Like, never wants to give him an inch. Well, in the comic, it opens up with him fucking her on her desk. And that gets him the boys back. Yeah. Like, that is that is how much control Billy has over so many people. It is insane. So I get they're trying to make him a bit more, I guess you could say, human. A bit more likable, maybe. Yeah, a bit more likable. It's just kind of some disappointing from, you know, what you get. Yeah, it's like, someone someone who's a fan of, of the comic isn't going to come in here and be like, yeah, that's 100% Billy. They're going to be like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, it's like, that's not Billy, come on. Yeah. But they still do, they have a lot of fun. Um, the guy who plays the Homelander, the actual actor who plays the Homelander, oh, he is great. I loved him. Yeah, he, he was absolutely fantastic. He he did an amazing job. He brought that guy to life. Yeah. I, I will say this this show had a very odd phenomenon that was going the entire time where every motherfucking actor in here, aside, so yeah, aside from Carl Urban, looks like another actor or looks incredibly familiar yeah. Like, Huey looks like, um, uh, who was it that played Barry? Yeah, he looks like, uh, Bill Hader. Yeah, he looks like Bill Hader. And it's, it, like, it's fucking nuts. It's, it, cause as soon as you see it, it goes away and you're like, ah, that's not him. But goddamn, it looked like him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously they do actually have big name actors in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, um... Carl uh, Urban. Carl Urban. They have, um, um, sh um... The chick, the chick who plays the main Vought CEO lady. Yeah. Like, she actually was, like, the girlfriend of Karate Kid. Yeah. Um... um Haley Joel Osment is, is yeah, his. Haley Joel Osment is I'm not spoiling his. how because he, that was fucking brilliant. Yeah. Uh, do you want to spoil the dad? Let's go ahead because that that would actually that would probably win some of the comic fans over because they okay. know. So the the big story is that when the comic was first coming out, Huey was actually drawn to look like Simon Pegg because this is around the time Simon Pegg's career really started taking off, mm -hmm. and Garth Ennis is a big fan of Simon Pegg, so he's like, "Fuck it, I'll make him Huey." Well. There was actually talks for years that there was going to be a boys movie or a show or something. Yeah. And everyone wanted Simon Pegg to be Huey. Yeah. Well, it eventually got to the point where Simon Pegg had to come out and say, I would love to do it, but I'm just too old. Yeah, he's just too old. Yeah, because he was in his fucking 30s when the comic came out and he was supposed to be like 25. Yeah. Well, they at least got Simon Pegg in as a cameo. Yeah. And... He, he, he does good. It's nice to see him. Yeah, it's definitely nice, it's nice to see him. Yeah, because I love Simon Pegg as an actor. He's really good. Yeah, it's 100% a, like a nod that like the, the fans yeah. were going to recognize. Yeah, and, and it is nice to see. Um, I will say there are some more cameos that perhaps we're just not really remembering. Because, once again, it's familiar space syndrome where you're not sure if that's actually a famous guy or not. Yeah, for the first couple episodes, every time I saw someone, I was like, Hey, pull up your phone, see who see who plays them. Yeah, yeah. The ones we know for sure are Haley Joel Osment, Simon Pegg, and Carl Urban. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they do they do really good. They do good good work. 
The girl who plays Starlight, pretty much exactly the same from the comics. She she looked very, very, very similar and on yeah. point. I like that. The the only real difference is they try to make her a bit more strong. Strong. You know, strong, independent girl. Yeah. When the, the Starlight in the comic is really feeble, really like... Ooh, oh, uh, what should I do? Yeah. But as it goes on, she becomes more strong, bitter, and, you know, meeting Huey, because that's the thing that happens. She meets Huey. Yeah. yeah, she meets Huey and everything, and that, that helps her out. And this one, they kind of, like, expedite it, and she starts off as kind of, like, feeble for approximately one and a half episodes. Yeah. Then then she's bitter, which, okay, whatever. Yeah, and then she's a bitter asshole. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I will say is the development between... Huey and Starlight, it's nice, but once again, if you read the comics, you realize that, holy shit, there's a lot missing. Yeah. Where, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna go ahead and spoil this aspect of the show, because it is tiny, because you both, you, you get to the same result no matter what. Yeah. But Huey and Starlight end up actually getting into a relationship. Yeah. And you have this kind of, I don't want to say Romeo and Juliet type thing going on, but it is that, where you have one dude who is entire job revolves around fucking over and murdering superheroes yeah and the other is what on one of the biggest superhero teams out there yeah it's it's a forbidden love type thing yeah and neither know of what the other does and in the comic they go for a long time without ever figuring out anything about each other like so huey and starlight have sex like three or four times and are dating over the span of months before she decides to reveal her secret identity. Yeah. And Huey, who has been bugging the, the the seventh compound, or the seventh power. compound, and has been watching everything happen, has to pretend <laughs> to be surprised. Yeah. And oh man, if you read the comic, you know that scene is like because he has a fucking PTSD level flashback where he's yeah. he's flashing back to the really bad thing that Starlight had to go through. Yeah. And it's like oh no, oh jeez, oh no. Yeah, and in this they almost make fun of it because people literally recognize her out in the street and it's like, oh, hey, you're Starlight. Yeah. Like, it's literally impossible for Huey not to recognize her. Yeah, and I get that. It's just one of those where that, that scene is just so, yeah. so good. But whatever, it's fine. Who cares? Yeah. And I, I did think they did, uh, so Huey's PTSD flashbacks, I think they did them in a really, really well, like, well yeah. done way in this. I liked what they were supposed to represent. Yeah. Where the whole idea is that Huey is, by nature, he's not a violent guy. He's not like Billy. Yeah. Billy's the kind of guy where he'd rip open your fucking skull with a crowbar and laugh while he does it. Yeah, if Billy doesn't think he can manipulate you, his first instinct is to kill you. Exactly. And Huey, by nature, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He doesn't want to hurt people. He doesn't want to torture people. You know, that's just not him. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole thing is he flashes back to the death of Robin whenever he's at, like, a, a period of... Uh, extreme you know, stress. Extreme stress, or he's not sure what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> and those flashbacks make him do some really bad things. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to spoil how, but man, man, he hurts Translucent. <laughs> Translucent. All the super, superheroes have it coming. None of them are redeemable. None of them are redeemable, but the invisible guy gets it so hard. He does. Yeah. So, this is a really good show. It's really fun. It's hard to talk about it without delving too much into shit, but this is one of those cases where we want to avoid that. Yeah, we want, we want to avoid it, but at the same time, we really want to spoil it, because it's it's like one of those things where you want to talk more about it. You want to talk more about it, and obviously it's hard not to relate to the comics, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it can be kind of a jumbled mess to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Especially since this is a show that just came out, so you're not sure, you know, how many people are going to watch it, how much of this is that, that, that. Yeah. But, no, it's, it's a good show. It's a fun show. I will say when it actually tries to be like an action show, yeah, it can be a little like, oh, that's cheap. Yeah, like it, the, what, there weren't really too terribly many like, like superhero action scenes in this. But when they were there, they didn't look great. Yeah, like whenever Homelander uses his heat vision, like that's kind of you can tell it's a little like ooh, yeah, and it looks cheap. A lot of the gore is CG. But yeah. yeah, but the way it's done, excuse me, the way it's done is really kind of kind of fun and, and good. It kind of it yeah. takes you out of it, but it keeps you in at the same time. Like yeah, uh, the death of Robin has uh, like a lot of CG yeah. in it, but at the same time, it's still like it's still pretty like oh fuck. It's like oh fuck, and and you like it. Yeah, and there are some other points where like uh, I think the fight at the end where. You know, obviously skipping over a lot of details, uh, A Train and Starlight fight. I think yeah. that just visually looks like shit. That visually looks like shit because 
it wasn't clear what was going on. No, because it, it looked like he was trying to dodge things, but it looked like he ran straight into them. It, yeah. Uh, it just didn't, the effects weren't great. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to dodge things, but he was running, like, directly into the blast. He would run into it and dodge, like, as he, would, he was running into it for no he, reason. He would kind of, like, bend his shoulders a little bit. And, yeah. So when, whenever it tried to do that, it didn't look great, but when it, when it was actually trying to be a goofy comedy is a lot better. Yeah, goofy, com goofy comedy is good, and the smaller scale action scenes are good too. Like, yeah, uh, open firefights were were yeah. good. Um, the this, female is fun. Yeah, the female is fun. the The beginning scene with translucent, I thought was oh yeah, that done was great. pretty fucking well. That was great. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, and you know, obviously, there are a lot of other things that you can kind of nitpick around, like mm -hmm. you know. It, this is one of those where I will say if you're looking for plot holes, you're gonna find them. Yeah, you're yeah, one hundred percent. But this is also a thing where it's a satire. That's not the point. It's not supposed to be that. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking for the wrong apple in the wrong tree. Yeah. So it, this is one of those where if you can laugh at the humor, if you can appreciate just kind of the general edginess of it all, you'll you'll probably really like this. Um, fair warning: the greatest scene ever involves the deep. <laughs> which is a, the Aquaman of the world and a dolphin. <laughs> this is so, this is so stupid. I don't remember that from the comics. I am 100% convinced it's not in there. No, no, it's not. Because I think the deep in the comics is just, he shows up for like a panel. Yeah, right? Like he's just a dude in a scuba suit. That's <laughs> it. And they make him in this like way funnier. They, they he, do something, they did a lot with his character in this actually. They did a lot with his character and it was all really funny. I actually really like the guy who played the Deep, even though he is like a completely irredeemable asshole. He's a completely irredeemable, like, sexual assaulty asshole, but he is the funniest motherfucker. He's the funniest motherfucker, mo mother, motherfucker, motherfucker, and he's the most deserving of a redemption arc by the end of this. And it's so weird. Yeah, because, like, the, the guy they try so hard to make you think he deserves a redemption arc, A-Train, is the biggest piece of shit in the fucking show next to the Homelander. Yeah. Like, for a moment, whenever they, like, the shit happens with, with uh, A-Train and... And, uh, and, uh, and his girlfriend. Yeah, and his girlfriend and everything, and you see his kind of spiral down and everything. He, like, I thought they were setting up for a redemption arc, and then they go anti-redemption arc and, like, compound him into being an asshole and I'm like alright now that's the boys but what the fuck yeah it's like that's the boys also break his fucking legs <laughs> break both of it fuck Flash fuck him yeah break his spine so he can never walk again yeah fastest man in a fucking wheelchair fastest man in a move your arms faster asshole yeah there you go so this does play around with a lot of the canon of the boys like specifically the plot around Billy and his wife is changed dramatically, dramatically to the point where I'm actually like, what the fuck are you going to do for season two? Yeah, it, it pumps you up to see season two uh, 150%. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those where it's like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, uh, and it's really weird because this was only an eight episode series. Only about eight, yeah. Yeah, and it feels like if they just gave it that extra, like, four episodes. You would have a lot covered. You would have a lot, You it would be like a, a complete season. As it is now, it feels like a mini series that needs to have like two more episodes to finish up. Oh yeah, yeah. And all in all, this this is a lot of fun. Really great characters do really fucked up shit, but that's oh, yeah. the point of the show. So you might see articles saying like, "Oh, how the boy supports rape by trying to redeem a monster," yeah. crap like that. Even though they're completely not getting the joke, and that the Me Too victim was completely whored out and sold for corporate profit. Yeah. So even that aspect is nothing more than just points for some fucking bureaucrats number board or some shit like that yeah points for their corporate board you know the more points you get the more you get paid so go out there and fucking me to it up bitch exactly it's like every single thing in this is a joke and i'm even convinced this shit with queen mob being a lesbian is also a joke yeah. i'm just trying to figure out what the joke was because <laughs> they they try super hard to be like oh she actually had a girlfriend that cared about her and i'm like well that's not mob from the comics she, yeah she fucked anything that moved okay yeah. so What's the twist here? What, what am I not seeing? What do I not understand? Yeah. And obviously, if you go looking for woke shadows, you're going to find it because, mm -hmm. yeah, that's... Uh, I'm sick of that shit, too, where it's like, 
oh, there's a black guy in this, therefore it is now We Was Kangs and you should never watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of I'm sick of fucking both sides, like, yeah. 100%. That's why I'm happy shit like this exists, because it makes fun of everything. Yeah, it makes fun, it makes fun of everything. It makes fun of, like, religion, all of it, and, like, I, nothing's off the table. Uh, dude gets his head crushed while eating a chick out. Uh, <laughs> dude, loses, dude loses his dick to a nice woman. I, I'm... <laughs> I, as we got to that scene, I made I made the the joke crush my head like a watermelon, mommy, and then his head got crushed like a watermelon. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, it's that kind of show. Yeah, it's fantastic, and I I, I do have something I want to say to Seth Rogen himself because he was a producer on this. He was a producer, and he made a cameo. Yeah, and he made a cameo. That was another one we forgot. Yeah, yeah Seth Rogen himself was in this. He played Seth Rogen. Uh, I don't know what like thing he had to do with this you know i'm not sure how big of a producer he was on this because there's was, there's was a lot of fucking producers on this yeah garth ennis himself yeah was one whatever it was like thank you for not being yourself yes thank you for fucking off thank you for fucking off or taking this seriously because like he he claims to be a big fan of the boys yeah he was also a big fan of preacher because he was one executive producers behind that yeah after this I do believe him on this, because this, this felt like it was crafted with care. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I definitely see that, and it's the fact that Seth Rogen, you know, he's super into the woke shit, so I was fully yeah. expecting, like, oh, he's gonna shove a bunch of crap in. No, not really. This, so. this makes me wonder how much of the woke shit is just him fucking goofing on people. I know, right? It's like... Was he never know. woke? Is, is, is he... Seth Rogen a Nazi? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But it's a great show. I'd say it's worth getting Amazon to check it out. Yeah, 100%. Especially if you get like a free trial or something. Yeah, free trial or hack into your friend's account. No, oh, well, wait a minute. Yeah. So, watch it. Watch it 100%. Yeah, fucking see ya. See ya.